Just a quick look at our spaghetti squash. You remember we started here a couple of weeks back. This stuff is now about, let's see, we started the seeds on 725. Uh, so, just a little over a month old. And I keep adding rope for them to grow on. You can see the one, the one that started out doing so well was this one here on the right. It went up, hit the roof, so we turned it. Now I got to the exterior wall and we're turning it again, uh, just following the rope onto our south wall. And then the other one that hadn't grown quite as fast but is rapidly catching up is right there. It's headed to the south wall as well. Um, we do have blooms on the first one now. Um, now guys, y'all help me out. I don't know what's a male and what's a female bloom. I'm just happy to have blooms. Uh, believe it or not, this is our first attempt at getting spaghetti squash to, to grow uh, in our system. And it's not because they died in the system. It's that I could not get seeds to sprout. Turns out we had a bad batch of seeds that I started with. And uh, that was holding us back. Um, we did do something a little different when we sprouted these. And we started sprouting a lot of plants this way just to see what would happen. Um, we're putting them in plastic baggies. And uh, with a paper towel, wetting that uh, for a few days with tap water and then once they do sprout we'll go ahead and add some system water so to get some nitrate in there uh, to help kick them on up and get some some leaf production and root production happening so we're doing it soilless and then we bring them out here we remove them from that and stick them right in the beds and just to show you this tomato plant right here it's got blooms on it hadn't seen any fruit yet it's now probably a four foot tall bush uh, it's indeterminate, so it's going to go all over the place, we hope, uh, and create our, or, or make a lot of tomatoes. That came from a baggie. Uh, and that was started on 725 also. And then back in here, through the marigolds, two more tomato plants that started from baggie. Uh, and they started just a, about two weeks ago. I don't have an exact date, but it's been about two weeks. And we just take them out of the baggie, stick them right in the system. So far, everything has grown well doing it that way, except for some peas that I started. Oh, oh wow, it's time to pick jalapenos again. They are just everywhere. A little bit hot for our taste, but uh, until our tam uh, jalapenos, the mild jalapenos get up and start producing, this is what we got. Just looking around, our basil's trying to flower right here. See our swirl filter over there at the corner which is full. Today we're actually going to empty that and put it on part of our yard. You see our other squash plant. That's just a yellow crookneck squash. It's over here. It's actually ready to be tied up again. It has just gone and done a lot. It has produced a lot of fruit and uh, has just gone wild. You see everything that's died behind it and then even a new shoot has come out in two places. Uh, so this, this plant just keeps producing. Anyway, our okra, we've got some that's ready to pick right now. I don't know if you can see it up at the top near the, the roof. But there is okra up there ready to be picked. Along with our jalapenos. So we'll probably do that today and, and grill okra. We've got family in, so we'll have some grilled okra for them. Another okra over there if you can see it. About middle screen right now. Our uh, Swiss chard is doing just excellent. It's about time to start some more kale. We're, we don't have any kale in the system right now. So it's time to start some more kale, get that going. We got some corn in the back that we just did just, just to play with sweet corn. It produced, but uh, they're not very big, and, and I'm fixing to actually pull some uh, cobs off and see if they produced anything inside, or if it's just a, a cob-shaped pod. Uh, see if there's actually any kernels in there. If there is, we'll uh, see about eating that. It'll be small, but maybe very sweet. Anyway, that's it for now. Just wanted to really show these uh, spaghetti squash plants and how well they're doing. We just treated for uh, powdery mildew, which we've seen a few spots pop up. With the high humidity here in East Texas right now, we're, we're having to watch powdery mildew real close. Uh, we had some on our smaller squash plants here also. Uh, and these are primarily yellow crookneck, the same as this big one that's going out over here, and straight neck squash. And then we've got an acorn squash in the back that you can't see, but it is back there. Anyway, for those of you that were asking about uh, using IBCs for their beds, and I keep telling you they're, they're a very inefficient growing area, 
you do have lots of grow space it's just hard to get to uh, so when you walk around this thing you walk up to here and you can reach so far out and then you have to go around the other side and by the time you get to that back bed uh, you can only get to it from certain areas you can't actually walk all the way around it um, so that's that's an issue something to think about before you actually commit yourself to a full IBC system in this configuration anyway and our, our sump is actually underneath down there on the ground you see we have a connector here this is the one IBC base that we have that has a valve in it for draining uh, the bed now I wish I'd used my sump as an IBC uh, grow bed also and just put a regular something else down there for the sump that way I could drain that bed and what happens is when I open this valve you see lots of crap coming out of this grow bed and I can only imagine that the other grow beds are having the same build up and the problem with that is these IBCs especially the tops of them will have areas that are, are lower than the rest and stuff will accumulate there and never move and it becomes anaerobic and when that anaerobic area happens that causes our, our system pH to drop rapidly and also creates some other issues that we don't like. Anyway, have a great day.